Welcome to The Topic, where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our regions of the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us on HCC TV, social media, YouTube, well, you can download the audio versions of our shows at hccs.edu slash podcasts. Very special show for you today. Every three minutes, someone in the U.S. is diagnosed with a blood disease or blood disorder. Sometimes the treatment requires, the be with the best chance of success, requires a bone marrow transplant. And we've got some folks here to talk about that today. We're joined by Gaitri Kapoor, donor contact representative for Be The Match Gulf Coast, and one of our Houston Community College students, uh, Mia, who's going to tell us about her experience while waiting for a donor. Thanks for both of you for being here on the show. Thank you, Thank you. for inviting us. Outreach events for in for Be The Match. I know years ago I signed up. I took the uh, the sample as you've got right here. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But I signed up for this and I was in your, your bank for quite some time. And I imagine that's the best way through these outreach events to find donors for bone marrow, correct? That is correct. See, if patients have a better chance to match someone who shares their own ethnicity. So be the match, we maintain a database of millions. Still finding a matching donor becomes a challenge because one in hundreds or sometimes one in thousands match. Um, so even though we maintain database right. uh, of millions, it's a challenge. For Mia, we've been trying for last three years to find a matching donor. And unfortunately, we don't have one. Just like Mia, there are many other patients. Uh, so very few people are able to find a match on time. That is the reason every 10 minutes we lose a, uh, someone loses a battle because they don't get a transplant on time. Time is the key over here. Well, you, you mentioned something very important because every three minutes someone's diagnosed with this, but really every 10 minutes someone um, is passing away from this from that, a blood without disorder. The, yes, without uh, finding a match on right at right wow. time for the transplant. Now, does your bank stretch across the United States or is it regional? How does that it work? It is stretched across the uh, United States and we work with international registries as well. Oh, really? Yes, so that gives patients a little bit better hope of finding a matching donor. Um, people living over here in Houston can be matched with somebody in California, somebody right. outside of United States, Canada, Africa, India, UK, anywhere. And when you're finding a match, say I'm the donor and someone match, I match someone, am I only going to match that one person or could I match possible several people? How does that work? Uh, Theoretically, you can say that you can match several people, but the data shows that you probably match one person. Really? Yes. And as I said, one in thousands match. So in case you are a match for a patient mm -hmm. and you, if you match someone in California, you don't need to travel to California for the donation. Right. Living in Houston, you are eligible to give donation over here, and somebody will take those precious magical cells to the patient, and the patient will receive the transplant there. Is, is, can the match come from your own family? Does that happen in many cases? Yes. Uh, see, for a successful transplant, immune system marker, we call them HLAs, needs to be matched. And these are inherited from parents. So our body has 10 main markers, five come from mother, five come from father. So parents can never be the perfect match. Siblings do have some chances, right. but only 25% chances. So it means 75% of the patients depend on unrelated donors and most probably of their own ethnicity. Now, Mia, I want to ask you, when did you first learn you had a blood disorder? Have you had it all your life? And, and what are the symptoms that you suffer from? Well, I was diagnosed at birth, and um, I started showing symptoms at, um, I was an infant, so around two months okay. of age. And the symptoms that I first experienced were swelling in my hands and feet, extreme pain, like um, joint swelling, joint pain. Yeah. And as I got older into uh, my adolescent years, 
I started getting more like localized pain, like in my leg, in mm-hmm. my back, and uh, my arms. And sickle cell disease is a inherited blood disorder. That means that a pa- both parents or one parent has the sickle cell trait. Right. And both of my parents had the trait, so I got the disease. I see. And the disease is when your body doesn't produce enough oxygen to make new red blood cells so the blood cells you have sickle into a crescent moon like a banana shape Mm -hmm, and they clog your um, veins kind of like a traffic jam and where that traffic jam is in your blood veins it causes extreme pain it feels like it's like a throbbing stabbing burning pain and does this pain keep you from functioning normal or going out or making cl- going to classes, uh, doing things normal people would do? Are there days when you just cannot do that? Yes, every day is um, a challenge. Right. When I wake up, it's like, okay, now what hurts? What can I do today? What can I not do today? It is a challenge for me to do a full load of classes, so I go part-time. And sometimes even then I have to you know, email my professors and say I'm physically unable to sure. attend and concentrate. How long have you been involved with Be The Match uh, waiting for a donor? About three years. And tell me about the process in getting to that and, and what it's like. Is it, um, is it something where on a daily basis you're checking with them? Or are you waiting for a phone call or email? How does that work? Well, I've been working with Gaitri for a couple of weeks and we touch bases um, over the phone. and. For me, on my social media, I try to promote it to try to get others, try to get my friends. And um, I haven't really had any luck in getting um, feedback and getting a donor. So I'm hoping that through this and working with Be The Match and HCC, I can get a more wide range of people because HCC, there's a lot of different ethnicities. There's a lot of um, African people, West African people. And I think that would be helpful for me. Guy Tree, uh, is it typical with uh, someone like Mia to be on a waiting list for this long? And have you had uh, have you had recipients who've been on the waiting list longer? That is right. Uh, we do have patients who've been waiting for nine years, ten years. Wow. And in very rare cases, we do find that people find a match very quickly, and those people recover really well and lead a normal life. And uh, your first question was uh, to Mia that how, how she's going to find out about a matching donor. The system is very well planned. Mm-hmm. I mean, a patient don't have to look for the donor, so Be The Match registry works with the hospitals and the doctors. If a match is found, the Be The Match and the hos- doctors and the hospital will work, and Mia doesn't have to be take the stress of this thing. Right. But uh, if there is a match, we will uh, coordinate and the donation will proceed. But the first and the most important thing is we need to find a matching donor. Find the match first. Are we any closer to finding any type of um, uh, medical breakthrough where we can produce these uh, these um, cells or what you're looking for artificially as opposed to finding donors? Are we anywhere near that with, uh, with science see, and technology? Um, for now, um, the bone marrow transplant is the only is cure. Is the most successful. Yes, problem. and the other things like gene therapy, um, it's still in process. It may take a few years. And for the patients who are in need of a transplant, it's better for them to find a match now. And um, some of the patients don't have that much time to wait for right. five years or 10 years then by the time we have the, yeah. Um, how many people across the U.S. are affected with this blood disorders that are, are, don- are waiting for donors right now? As US? I said, thousands of people are. Every three minutes, someone gets diagnosed. It's so it's We have thousands. Every single day, we get new patients in need of the transplant. Now, it's a very simple process. We're going to go over that in a little while and talk about the uh, process where you can get screened. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mentioned outreach events because I think where I signed up with you guys, it was an outreach uh, health and wellness event. Mm -hmm. Um, How many of those do you guys do every year? And is that your main uh, way of getting people to donate to? Our main way of getting people signed up is through colleges. We're, because the younger donors are considered as the best donors, right. so we can uh, reach out to the younger donors through the colleges. So that is our main thing. Uh, along with that, we do the health fairs, community events. Yep. Those are our secondary events. 
but the main focus is the colleges. We are talking with Guy Tree Kapoor, and you're the donor contact representative, Be the Match Gulf Coast. And Mia Wright has been joining us for this uh, for this segment. Um, you're an HCC student suffering yes. from a blood disorder, and we really wish you the best of luck in finding a donor. I have a feeling it's going to be not that far from now. We're going to get the word out there and help you as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. We'll have you back in a, in a few moments. And we're going to talk more about the, the, the process of getting screened. It's very simple. You'd be amazed how simple it is. You'll wonder, why couldn't I do this earlier? We're going to talk about that when the topic returns. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplant. This very special show for you today. We're talking about bone marrow transplants and donating bone marrow. How can you become a one who could possibly be a donor and maybe save a life? We're going to learn more about that today. We're joined by Gayatri Kapoor, and you're with Be The Match Gulf Coast. And also, Zane Kassam uh, is joining us right now. Zane, former U of H grad. Good. Go, Cougs. go Cougs. There you go. And also, you learned while in college about this donor program, yes, and you were able to uh, sign up to be a donor, and now it's it's been fruitful for you and the recipient as well. Tell me about that. So I was at the University of Houston my freshman year, and I was just walking through the common area and about to get some Chick-fil-A or something, and uh, be, I saw the Be The Match booth over there. I was right. like, one, one of my friends, uh, and she pointed out, like, oh, they're giving away free T-shirts. Let's go get one. So I was like, okay, let's go get it's one. It's always you know. a good grab. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and as a college student, you can never have enough, yeah. right? Yes. So we go ahead and, you know, we approach the booth. And uh, I think, I don't know if Gaichi was there or not, but they asked me, hey, do you want a free t-shirt? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, she wants one. I'll, you know, I'm trying to impress a girl. So, yeah. you know, gave her a free t-shirt. And they're like, oh, you're going to have to take a sample swab kit. That she, there's an example of here. I'm um, like, okay, sure. You know, no big deal. So I fill out my information, do the swab kit, and get the t-shirt. And it took you a total of how long? Oh, from start to finish, I think four minutes. Four minutes. Yeah. And, and now, how long was it till you guys found an actual recipient for his donation? Uh, almost four years. Four, four years. years. Yes. And then you found a recipient, and how did it work then? Do you contact Zane? And had you even remembered that you did this? No. No. <laughs> Not at all, actually. It was uh, it's pretty shocking. So yeah. I signed a freshman year, pretty much right when I got into college. Right. And then I got contacted April, I think it was April of uh, my senior year right before I was about to graduate in May. So that whole timeline was a blur. I mean, I don't remember, you know, what I ate for lunch, let alone <laughs> right, signing up yeah. for something. Yeah, yeah. And so when she, uh, when I got a call from Be The Match, I was, you know, I cut taking it back. That's, it's, it's amazing when you hear this happening because you're, you're just, uh, like he said, he was just stopping by to get the free t-shirt. That's right. Did the swab, and then four years later, he's saving a life. Um, <laughs> And is this common story? Years down the road, you find somebody? That is right. That is pretty common. Um, because once you give the samples, it takes around six weeks to test those. Right. Once we have the result, uh, you become part of patient search worldwide. So until you turn 61, you are eligible to stay on the registry. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. If somebody signs up at the age of 18 yeah. until they turn 61, it's a long road. They can match any time. So... Once you contacted Zane, and then what was the next steps? Have you already donated the marrow? No, and no. so actually uh, they contacted me, and okay. then they sent me to my local uh, blood uh, blood testing area, I mean uh, facility. Right. And um, they took they drew some more blood to run additional tests, a simple blood test. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people get through that, so it's pretty simple. And then from there, um, oh, it's kind of a waiting game. Um, they had to you know run the tests and things like that, and then they contacted me again saying you know you might be a very potential match for someone 
So can you go run additional tests? Yeah. So they sent me to the Methodist in the uh, in the medical, medical center. center, and from there they ran like all these tests. It's like a you know ten thousand dollar test. Yeah, it's like yeah. huge. You yeah. know they do X-rays, uh, bl- everything. You know urine right. samples, everything like that. Um, I got my results. I was pretty healthy and eligible to donate. And finds out that I'm one for one match for a certain individual. Didn't know who it was. No, didn't know any information. And just kind of on out on a limb at that point. Now here's the cool part of the story. Okay, we 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 determined that he's already a match for someone. You had a chance to meet the recipient. Yes. Tell me about that. So actually, just a couple of weeks ago, um, I was hosting. I mean, me and Gaichi uh, were hosting a radio show locally in Houston, um, and then they turn out that they put him on FaceTime and because he's in California. Yeah. Okay. Um, his name is Abe. Uh, he's 26 years old. Wow. Um, I'm 23. So, you know, I, was, I never had a brother, I have one little sister. Yeah. And so it's kind of like he was explaining to me, you know, like I'm like his, you know, his brother now. So he has the same blood type as me now. Uh, all my cells are in his body um, and I'm helping him get better. So it's uh, pretty fascinating. Now, what will be the next step? Because he'll have to go in for the procedure. How does that work? No, actually, the procedure is done oh, now. It's done. Oh, it's done. done. It's already done. He actually, so you had that done. Yeah, he survived. They- Mm-hmm. Wow, um, he is doing great. You know, we he, we talk all the time now. Uh, the procedure is really easy, actually. The one that I did, actually. Yeah. Uh, and the guy can go more into that because there's a lot of terms that I still don't sure. understand. So, so there are two ways uh, donors can donate. One is called peripheral blood stem cells donation, and 80% of donations are done through this way. Okay. It is pretty much similar to platelet or white blood cell donations. Okay. And uh, blood is withdrawn through donor's arm. And then it goes through a FRCS machine that separate out the blood stem cells. These are also called mother cells because they are responsible for producing all blood components. And after collecting the stem cells, rest of the blood components return back to donors through the other arm. And uh, throughout the donation process, donors are comfortable. They can watch TV. Friends or relatives can give company. They can eat or drink whatever they want. So and it's like giving blood, more or less. Essentially. Yeah. Very I similar mean, to that. Well, for me, it's like a four-hour procedure. Yeah. Uh, I had Chick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're getting a lot of ads from us today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. I love that place. I yeah. Uh, but uh, sister my little sister was come. there. Yeah, my yeah. sister was, you know, we're watching a movie. We're yeah. just relaxing. It was, I mean, I'll just imagine it sitting like this. Right, right, right. Just, right. Well, I've gave, given platelets before, so right. I, I'm mm-hmm. familiar with that procedure and you said it's very similar yes it is pretty similar so that's that. that's the most common way and there's another traditional way which guy you can yeah, I guess. the other method is called traditional marrow donation it takes less time around 45 minutes right and in this these uh, stem cells are harvested directly from the hip bone yeah that's and the no one i'm in, more familiar with yes and uh, it's like not that invasive because doctors use simple syringes to withdraw the liquid marrow okay and while donor is under anesthesia so no pain sleeping like a baby and no incision is made so after the donation no dressing no medication is needed just one or two days of rest and donors resume to to normal yeah and the process of donating itself is extraordinarily easy. Maybe easy. you can tell, show us real so, quickly what that's yeah. about. For the registration, it's a simple cheek swab test, the long Q-tips, and that's it. And that's it. You that's place it, it in there, fill yeah. out the paperwork, and uh, Not even the paperwork. In. It's like a simple form that you fill up on your phone. Okay. You've on your phone. On now. your phone. Wow. It's that easy. And then give the sw- swab samples, and you are done. That is the first step. And from there, we send it to the lab where it takes four to six weeks for the testing. Once we have the results, you become part of patient search. And in case you match, you get the opportunity to save someone's life. Right. In normal life, we say the doctors save lives. Yeah. You don't need to be a doctor to save a life. You're going to be the one that's doing that. And, you know, make a lifelong friend from what it sounds like. You've got a brother now. It's been very rewarding. I mean, you know, um, I've been working with Be The Match I mean, all the time now, I think yeah. at least once yeah. or twice a month. I donate as much of my time as I can. And then after that, I also talk to my recipient, Abe. He's like my older brother now. It's pretty cool, you know, like we have the same interests. Yeah. You know, we talk about sports. It's just, it's just been, like I said, really rewarding and something I can, you know, hold, my, hold up my head high for that. That is incredible. It's it's an incredible story, very heartwarming, and, and really, it really shows you what this program is all about. Be the match. We talk about outreach events, and uh, you can certainly find them at outreach events, but most importantly, you can go to giveblood.org slash be the match. Giveblood.org slash be the match, and they can register through that site, and then would you send them this, or do they come in person to get this from you? Uh, we can do both things. We okay. can um, do the events where we can 
come there, bring the kits, and you can give the samples so there. So they can meet you at an event as well? Yes. Okay. And secondly, yes, you can order online as well. We're going to be back talking more about this, and uh, we'll talk once again with a Houston Community College student who is waiting for a blood donor right now. We'll hear more from her. Zane Kassam, thank you for being here. Very honorable. And, thank you for and, having uh, me. I appreciate great it. Great story here. We'll be back with uh, Guy Tree Kapoor from Be The Match. We're talking b bone marrow donorship. We'll have more coming up when we talk. This is Mac. She's ready to build herself a house and a business. But first, she's building her resume with a construction certification from Houston Community College. HCC, for everyone, anytime. I've seen people's lives change just by attending a class at HCC. Some of them might not have the financial means to go to a four-year university. That doesn't make them any less, quote unquote, smart than the kids who go to a four-year school. HCC is easy to get to. It's easy to apply and easy to become a part of. It gave me so much confidence. Once you finish your two years there, you can transition into a four-year university or go into the workforce. It's affordable. It's accessible. It changes lives. Meet Saskia. She loves cars. Seriously, she whistles at them. So she's studying engineering at Houston Community College. After that, a four-year degree. Then it's off to the races. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're talking about bone marrow transplants and donors needed. They're found through Be The Match. Joining me now from Be The Match, uh, Gaitri Kapoor. Thanks for being back once again. And we have welcome back to the show, Mia Wright. You are an HCC student that is suffering from spattling sickle cell disease, in, which is a blood disorder, correct? Yes. Um, Mia's been on your waiting list for three years. Tell me about the process on um, how you bring people to the waiting list, how they're referred to it. Do you seek them out? Do hospitals? You briefly mentioned it earlier. Tell us how that works. So um, we work directly with the hospitals. So if a patient is in need of the transplant, the doctors will inform them that you need a uh, transplant, and they will reach out to be the match to find a matching donor. If there is a match, uh, we will reach out to the donor and do the arrangements for the donation. But if there is not a match already in the registry, then we try to add more people uh, from the same ethnicity of the patient. So uh, for me, uh, being African-American, we are mm -hmm. trying to reach out to as many African-American right. possible uh, to add on the registry. And Mia, you had mentioned specifically earlier, HCC has a large number of international students. Yes. And you were saying specifically some of those students could help you out in this process. Maybe you could talk more about that. Yes, um, especially in my area of study, there are a lot of African American and African students, and those are that's the demographic that I need right. in order to receive the help that I need. And um, when you were, you said you've been on the waiting list for three years. Yes. Um, how did did the doctor talk to you about this? Were they the ones that said, "I'm going to put you on this waiting list"? Um, how did that work? Yes, my doctor, she, my hematologist, she put me on the waiting list and put me um, in with a specialist, a gene specialist, who told me about the, um, the bone marrow transplant, right. and they uh, connected me with Be The Match. Earlier, we met a young man um, who it was a donor. He signed up at a college, and now they found a recipient for him. Hearing stories and meeting people like that, does it, does it give you more hope that um, there are folks out there who are going to help you? Yes, I do feel hope. I'm very hopeful. I pray a lot about it. I meditate on it, and I'm very hopeful that I will find a donor. And I imagine... Um, do you get a chance to make those phone calls um, very often where you can tell the folks on your waiting list that you found them a donor? And what's that like? Have you been a part of that? Yes, I've been part of that. And I can give you an example for the Houston. Every year we have around 160 plus donations. Okay, so it's working. It is working. The only yeah. thing is we have more demand. Sure. We need more and more people in the registry. And one of our donors said, like, it's like a voting, that it is our right to vote yeah. the same way it is our right to help others in this need. And uh, so adding more people 
of all the ethnicities, not just the African American, right. because we get patients of all different ethnicities. So we need people from all different races, all different backgrounds, uh, to help patients of all different uh, groups here. And becoming registered in their system is very simple. I did it many years ago, and it's simply a swab in your mouth, and then you place it in the again. card. Yeah, it's a, sw a swab in your mouth, and you place it in the card, and, and it's yep, and you it's take just, it, and that's it. That's it. It's just two swabs, one on right, one on left, right. and that's it. That's how we can add. And uh, as I said uh, before, that we want to reach out to the colleges. And right. At, over here in community college, what we do is we um, do the table events, and the most important thing what we do is we uh, go to the classrooms. We take around 10, 15 minutes of the classroom time and give a brief information to the students, and interested students can give their samples right away. And you can start collecting the database. We mm -hmm. also know you have a special website that's set up for HCC students, and the website is join.bethematch.org slash HCC, or you can text HCC to 61474, and you guys can send them the kit, or you can have them meet you somewhere with the yes. kit, Yes, right? so uh, we are on campus on one of those campus four times a week. So anybody who is interested, um, especially for the professors, I would request that let us come to your classes. We take only 15 minutes, right. and we can come and give, give the brief information, and from there, students can take a decision if they want to join the registry or if they need some more information, we are available to provide any more information they uh, need. And uh, simple cheek swab test they can give over there in, your, in their classes or on campus where we have the table events. You know, Mia, we mentioned you're an HCC student. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about yourself and about what you're studying. Well, I am 26 years old, and I'm studying for fashion merchandising. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I'm pretty close to graduation, so... I'm very when happy are you graduating? About that. Um, hopefully December. Oh, wonderful! Wow. Yeah, not that long. It'll go by really yes. quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a young man on our show. I want to say about a month or so ago, and he was uh, he was involved. His name's Alan Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and he was involved with um, the uh, runway fashion show, the, mm -hmm. the the runway event that they have in Bravo. I don't know if you're yeah, familiar with that. Project yeah, runway. fashion mm -hmm. project runway. And uh, he went through the fashion program here at HCC. So we certainly wish you the best of luck yes. as well. We want to see you maybe on fashion one way, run one way maybe. one time. <laughs> maybe so. Um, once again, if folks want to donate to help, uh, really, if they want to donate to just to try to be a match for Mia or anyone on the list, they can go to join.bethematch.org slash HCC or text HCC to 61474. And uh, you'll be out on the campuses throughout the semester, correct? Yes, um, all different campuses, no matter whether you are in Spring Branch or Main Campus or uh, Common, every campus we are. So yeah, look for them on the campuses when you're Yes, we have well. the table events. And another thing that I really request all the professors, so give us around 15 minutes of the time. We would really appreciate that opportunity so that we can give brief information to the students for this cause. Gaitri Kapoor, donor contact representative, Be The Match. Gulf Coast, thank you for joining us today thank on this you very for important subject. Me. And good luck to you, Mia Wright, thank HCC you. student. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you again, maybe talking about fashion merchandising or when they find that recipient for you. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for being thank here you. today. Thank and you. thank you for joining us on the topic. If you want to download our podcast, make sure you go to hccs.edu slash podcast. For the topic on HCC TV, I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you next time.